Hey, excited to have you here. Excited and to be here. Sloan Heffernan, I want to tell people we met a, a number of years ago at the Digital Marketing Conference in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And it was so exciting because we, we hit it off with our passion of reporting and speaking and everything else and and uh, chatted. And then I, I guess what, a year or two later, you came up and said, uh, I, I took your advice and I'm speaking here. <laughs> well, I was just starting to put my toe in the water, if you will, exploring something outside of broadcast news. And I met you at that conference, that first yeah. digital marketing summit and learned so much talking from you and really enjoyed your energy and how generous you were sharing um, information with me because I was just starting to explore the possibility of leaving broadcast news. And, and then that following year, I did submit a pro proposal uh, to speak at the summit and they selected me because um, brand storytelling uh, at that point, a number of years ago, was really just taking off and it has really taken off now. Um, and, and it's all about humanizing your brand and telling your story. Yeah, that, that in a nutshell, Mar, and that was it. It was great to meet you and I'm so psyched to be here today. I have a little uh, bio I'd like to read, folks. The Sloan Heffernan is a two-time Emmy Award winner and former anchor reporter at WRAL-TV. Sloan recently stepped out uh, from the in front of the camera to launch Story More, a brand storytelling business. Story More works with businesses to clarify their message and bring their unique stories to life with click-worthy digital content. And Sloan also serves on the advisory board for startup at Wake Tech. Everything I see you doing is very aligned with what we're teaching here. That's why I wanted you to come on and share your adventure and tell people about the process of making real videos that get engagement and get results. Martin, thank you so much. And it's so great to be here with all of you. I really hope that this can be an engaging session that feel free to ask questions as we go along and we'll have some time at the end. Okay, so let's get started. Um, my name, again, Sloan Heffernan, as Martin said, I spent um, the better part of my life in broadcast journalism, working as a reporter and anchor at NBC Affiliates up and down the East Coast. I landed at WRAL about 15 years ago. And in the business of news, you need to move on to move up in the industry. So you start at small markets, small towns, and then you work your way up. Once you get to WRAL, though, many people stop because it is such a great station. It's family owned. And most people get there at around the time that they're starting to have a family. And as you all know, North Carolina is a great place to live and a great place to raise a family. Uh, in June, I decided to uh, leave broadcast news to start uh, brand journalism, as I like to call it, helping companies, organizations, and nonprofits tell their unique story. And what makes a journalist, particularly a TV journalist, a good storyteller for the digital age that we live in, in the social media age, is that we're forced to tell stories in a very compact way, very clear, concise, and to the point. Some cases we only have 20 to 30 seconds to tell a whole story. That's not a lot of time. And so the skills that we learn that can be beneficial to you in what you do is that we're able to sort of decide what elements of the story are important? What elements are going to capture your audience's attention? What elements are going to retain the audience's attention, right? Because our attention span is so short nowadays and people will simply keep on scrolling, right? So what can you do to capture and retain that attention? And my work in, in broadcast news really helped me sharpen all of those skills for decades, telling stories in a very short amount of time and figuring out what are the most important storytelling elements? And I'm going to share those with you today. Okay. And as Martin also mentioned, I am now um, the chief storyteller at StoryMore. We work with companies to clarify their message and also bring those unique stories to life. It's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. News was getting to the point where, especially during COVID, it was, it was just getting harder and harder. 
Um, and I would take these stories home with me and they would weigh heavy on my heart. And now I go to work every day, like so excited about what I do. And I just love it. It is so incredible to be able to pursue your passion. So I feel very fortunate about that. And I hope that you all are as passionate about marketing and social media as I am. And I hope that you're able to at least, I find like with these webinars, if you're at least able to just even take home like just one nugget that you can use after today, I feel like that's a success sometimes. So I hope you're able to take away more than one nugget, but um, I have some, some skills and some tips that I hope that will benefit you as you go and market your business on social media. Okay, so here's what we'll be covering today. Uh, we'll look at how best to identify your brand story. Stories are really powerful. They have a sticky factor to them. We, we tend to remember stories um, in the way that they're told. It's just something that, that if you've heard a story before and you go home and it stays with you and you tell your loved one about it, the way that the stories are put together, it, it allows us to really um, take them in and hold on to them. Um, and so storytelling is, there's a science to it as well. So that's what we'll go over to. It's not just, you don't just have to take my word for it. There is a science to storytelling and there's a reason, there's scientific evidence that supports why a story is so effective. Uh, a good story is effective. Also, we'll look at um, a few examples. Uh, Martin shared with me today uh, what some of you do and so I will take a few of those examples and um, give you some ideas as to how you can tell your unique brand story. Uh, then we'll look at some storytelling platforms. I know that, uh, that this course is primarily um, linked to social media and, and marketing on social media, but there's so many platforms where you can share your brand story. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And finally, I'll open up my reporting toolbox to give you some of the tools that we use as reporters to um, craft our unique narratives when we're out in the field and try to determine what elements are most important and what information that you just sometimes have to, there's all, all of the information is good information, right? If you're trying to tell a story and you're passionate about it, you feel like, oh my gosh, how do I leave something out? Um, but you can't include everything because if you include everything, it just bogs people down and, and they won't stay tuned. And so I think the average watch time nowadays for a video is like five to seven seconds. So people just don't have the patience nowadays to watch for very long and, um, and they don't really like to read either. So it's, it's critical to um, dig into this reporter toolbox to ask the right questions to tell your story and to try to figure out what the most important elements are when sharing your story with your desired audience. So that's what we'll go over today. Okay, let's talk about the science of storytelling. The brain processes images 60% faster than words. So those words, they're great, right? I love words, I love reading, uh, but what's gonna capture someone's attention and, 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 and make it stick, if you will, is the images. If you can tell a story, your brain story, with a visual picture, or even better, a video nowadays. If you're not doing video, you better start because video is where it's at. And it doesn't have to be some really highly produced video either. You know, I've got the new iPhone 13 Pro, and you don't even need that new iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro. But I will say that in my final week at WRAL, one of our photojournalists, she was using um, her iPhone 13 Pro to take some video and for the news. And I said, oh, you got a new phone? And she said, yeah. And so she said, slow. And she goes, this camera takes better footage than our $45,000 broadcast camera. So the cameras that, that they are producing and manufacturing on these phones nowadays are really terrific. So, you know, you don't have to go out and hire some big production crew to create this epic, you know, video for you, uh, you know, you should have for your business, you should definitely have a cornerstone video by all means, 
But for the day-to-day content that you need to create to feed that social media beast, use that cell phone, use that mobile device because it really, you know, creates beautiful video. And so those, those visuals, those images, they work a lot better than just the words alone. Also, messages delivered by stories are 22% memorable, more memorable than fact in many cases. It's that sticky factor that I talked about, that the way that a story is, is, is put together, that really stays with someone. So if you can deliver that message in a story, people will remember it. We relate to one another. You've got to humanize that brand. Also, a story activates a process in the brain called neural partnering. So neural partnering, what's that? So if you are somewhere and someone tells you a story, let's say, for instance, I lost my mom a number of years ago. And if I was talking to someone and they told me that they also lost their mom, suddenly their story becomes my story. That's how neural partnering works. If someone tells you something and you can relate to it in any way, suddenly that story becomes your own. And so there's, there's real power in that, right? Because that leads to a connection. So stories allow us to connect in a lot more, in a more meaningful way with our desired audience. Because if you think about um, if a story is relatable to your desired audience, suddenly that story is going to become their story. And there's going to be that connection with your brand. And there's going to be an automatic trust that develops and a relationship that develops. And with messages coming at us, an estimated 6,000 messages a day. There's one right there. Sorry, I didn't shut my, <laughs> my phone off. 6,000 messages coming at us a day. You've got to do something to stand out, right? So um, a story allows you to do that. And if it's a story that relates to your targeted audience, then it's going to be even more meaningful and even more effective. Okay, so what what steps do you need to take in this journey to connect with your desired audience? Well, like I mentioned, I've gone from broadcast journalism to brand journalism, and a lot of the same things apply. It's a matter of asking the right questions. The first question that I would say that you need to ask when you are developing your story, and again, this is not just a story for social media. This can be, you know, your website, copywriting on your website, to a newsletter, to an email marketing campaign. I mean, you name it and you can use brand storytelling. And the key is to to figure out what that message is. And so um, first off, what you want to do is the what. What are you trying to say? And like literally ask yourself that. I remember um, reporting in the field and covering either a real complicated a piece of legislation or a lengthy court case that was really complex. And at the end of the day, I had all of this information and I would be under a really tight deadline. And in a matter of hours, you have to turn that story in and go live on TV with something that's clear, concise to the point in a, typically a minute 20 or less. And so I would step back sometimes after gathering all of the interviews and all of the B-roll and all of the research that I've done in, in those hours and, and I'd be overwhelmed. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, how do, how do I even begin? Even at the end of my career, I was like, oh my gosh, overwhelmed, how do I begin? And so I would ask myself that question, what am I trying to tell the audience? What do I want them to take away? So when you're crafting your brand story, when you're trying to clarify that message, literally ask yourself, stop, pause, take a deep breath and say, what am I trying to say? ask yourself that question. And you'll be amazed at the clarity you find because suddenly it will rise to the top, like what the main message is that you want to send home with the audience, what the most important thing is that you want to share with them. Think of it as the headline. Also, who, who am I trying to, you know, target? Who is my audience? Think about that audience when you're crafting your message. Um, picture them if, if, if you can, depending on what type of business that you're in, create that persona, that ideal person you're talking to, give that person a name even. Think about what that person's interests are, how old they are, the demographic, their education, their income. I mean, you name it. Create this persona 
that you're talking to. And you might have different audience members that you're trying to appeal to. It might not be a one size fits all, but it is often nice to create at least one persona that you can think of. So you're talking to a person so that you don't get too bogged down with, you know, that sort of lingo that we use in certain industries, right? That's the last thing you want to do is, is, is not sound conversational. You want to sound conversational. When I started out my broadcast journalism career and I was in college, I remember um, listening to an instructor who talked about um, when you're talking to the camera, don't think about all of the people that are watching you, right? That could be overwhelming. And uh, instead, think of one person who you love or who loves you and talk to that person. So inevitably, I would stand in front of that camera and it didn't matter how nervous I was or how under, you know, tight the deadline was or breaking news. I thought, okay, I'm telling this story to my mother. And, um, and so I would encourage you to do the same thing. Create that persona, create that person and talk to that person in real person language because it's really easy to get wrapped up in, in, in sounding professional and using certain language that, you know, talk to people, social media, we're tired of the filters, right? We want authenticity. We want someone to be genuine. And so really just, just talk to someone. And I wonder, do you all find that when you're on social media, that you are drawn to people who are more genuine and more authentic? Does that appeal to you? Show of hands. Please uh, show of hands or unmute if you want to either way thank you thank you guys um and then and then ask the question why why should that audience member that you're talking to why should they care remember to hone in on that and it might be multiple reasons why they would care about the story that you're trying to share the message that you want to relay but really be intentional about all of these things. What am I trying to say? Who am I talking to? I mean, why should that person care? Um, I find now I'm such a critical viewer when I'm watching the news and some of the stories I think to myself, like, why are they sharing this particular element with me? This has no bearing on the life of like, sort of like the general public. And um, so ask yourself as, as, you're, as you're sharing your information, you know, why should I care? And, and quite honestly, be deliberate with telling people why they should care. Um, let, let them know why they should care um, and, and state it. Um, don't just assume that they should know. Like literally tell them why they should care, why this is important. Okay. So after taking that first step and figuring out the who, what, and why, um, these are the next steps. These are the, the brand storytelling steps that I would encourage you to take. Uh, number one, tell that story with a character. Again, we are human beings. And now more than ever in this age of social media, we need to humanize our brand. Share your message, frame your story around a person, a real person if possible. The character can become the voice of your story. Um, it can be a person, place, or thing, but make that character stand out. And again, these, these principles are, you know, these elements of storytelling, these are things that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Um, however, these are just sort of like guideposts, little reminders to help you frame your story. So, you know, creating a memorable character will really allow you to connect in a more meaningful way with your audience. Uh, number two, you know, you've all read books, you've watched movies, that narrative book, that's powerful. It hooks the audience um, and draws them in. And it could be something, it could be a, a compelling visual, it could be a strong statement that you're making in a social media post, something to capture the attention of the audience, something to hook them, and draw them in. Uh, number three, conflict. You know, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Um, again, be very intentional about what that problem is and letting your audience know what the problem is. And then number four, 
how does your product or service help solve that problem? And then you can drive it home with number five and have a call to action and let that audience know exactly what you would like to do next, whether it's a product that you're selling or a service that you're offering. Um, let them know what that call to action is and, and, and state it. Don't just assume again that they know what to do next. So those are the four steps that you should take when you're trying to craft that narrative to tell that story. And this is probably, I would say, the most important, aiming for the heart, because we do remember stories that have an emotional impact on us. And, and the more narrow that we tell a story, research shows, the more narrow we tell the story, the more universal it becomes. And all you have to do is look at an ad on TV or an ad on social media. And, and when they make it like uber specific about someone, um, it's more universal. It applies to it, us all. They're making it about one person and we can relate to that person because we're people, you know? And so, so that's the goal there. And, and that emotional component is so powerful as well. So if you can weave in any type of emotion, it doesn't have to be like, you know, sad emotion. It doesn't have to be like gloom and doom. Um, it can be any type of emotional component that aims for the heart, because that's where you'll find that people will really, that, that story will really resonate with people and they'll really remember it when you have emotion worked into your story. Okay, yeah. so here is, here is the story from i &E. uh, This is Michael. Today, life is so much better because I'm able to do things, I'm able to hang out with my family, I'm able to breathe. My name is Michael Pager, I'm an ethical hacker, and I get paid to break into websites to better protect your personal information. I was a cool man for 12 years. I own my own business, and I hated every second of it. I would work 12, 13, 14 hours every day and come home and just be exhausted. So tired, smelling so bad. They just hated the fact that I couldn't do anything with my family. And I hated the fact that I hated what I did. I knew that I wanted to protect people and I knew that I wanted to do something with people. I knew provided very practical training. And on day one, although I was very nervous, I felt like I could do the job no problem. A lot of the training I still use today. They made it feel very personable. The videos, it made it feel like it was just me and I and that he was teaching just me. I would recommend I need to anyone who truly wants to get into cybersecurity and truly wants to learn and learn quickly. The pressure is gone. The, the stress of every day is gone. I get excited to wake up on Mondays. Who does that? Through this training and what I learned from my has given me the ability to spend time with my family, get to love them, learn with them, play with them and just be the man that I always knew could be. All right. Any feedback on, on that particular story? What is it that, that maybe stood out to you in that story? You could definitely um, hear and see his genuine, well, his authenticity, if you will. Um, you, you know, it wasn't forced. It was just an easy thing for him to say, even though he's not an actor. I'm sure he's not done videos before or been interviewed very often, uh, but he did a good job with with that, presenting that. And Well, I think that, you know, we can all, thank you for that. I think we can all relate, particularly during the pandemic, right? It's caused a lot of us to do some soul searching. And um, maybe we've all worked in a profession where it wasn't really setting our soul on fire anymore. And I think that watching Michael and listening to Michael and particularly that final line where he said that it allowed him to be the man that he always knew he could be. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing more than selling this opportunity to be a cybersecurity expert. You may have seen in this title, he works for the Federal Reserve now. He was a pool cleaner. Now he works for the Federal Reserve. You know, so that's, that's really powerful, right? That there's something, you know, he's, he's got a really great job. Um, but even more than that great job, he's got a great life. And that was something that Catherine really wanted to communicate to the audience because that's universal, right? And again, the more specific we can tell a story, the more universal it can become. 
you know, I wasn't a pool guy. I, I worked for TV news, but I, I knew that it wasn't setting my soul on fire anymore. My love affair was waning and I knew I wanted to do something else. So I think this details can be different, but um, the situation can be universal and we all can relate to, to Michael. So, well, not all of us, but, you know, I think we've all been in a position where it's like, oh gosh, do I really want to continue doing this? And now Michael has found something that has really um, given him you know, uh, this amazing ability to be with his family and to be the man that he's always wanted to be. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, when we got that soundbite, y'all, we knew that was money right there. We were like, oh my gosh, you know, you, like you said, he's not an actor. And he said that and Catherine mm -hmm. and I were like, oh my God, <laughs> it was just awesome. And it was so genuine. And from the heart, the guy was amazing. <laughs> and Catherine found a great job, you know, finding that character. So if you are telling a story like this, and, um, you know, if it is video content that you are creating, you know, it, it, it is important to do that sort of pre-interview and find out what you're dealing with on the front end to make sure that they've got all the elements and, and can deliver um, in the way that you want them to deliver. You want it to be, like you said, authentic and genuine um, and, and you don't want it to be scripted, but you also want to do that brand journalism on the front end and make sure you ask the questions and hear the answers and make sure that it aligns with the message that you're trying to to share with your audience so that's michael thank you so much for watching that elements of a good story um that emotional component um with michael in there talking about how he was just miserable in his job and he hated his job that's an emotional component that I was talking about. It doesn't necessarily have to be sad, but you could really feel that he was like fed up with what he was doing. Um, some intrigue, you know, in that particular video, I would say the intrigue, you know, all of a sudden the music, you may have even sensed the music changed and, and there was a bit of a um, intensity that happened when he started talking about the training and how it prepared him. The authenticity, I love the part, and this is just an example, I love the part where he's like, you know, I get up and I forget what he says exactly, but it's like, and I look forward to going to work on Monday. Who does that? And he stops and he goes, <laughs> and it was a little, we kept that in there because we're like, <laughs> and it's something that, that was really authentic. Um, and, and then the vulnerability where, you know, he talked about how he wasn't happy in his life and wasn't able to spend time with his family. I mean, we've all felt that level of guilt, I think. Um, where, where we feel like we're not doing our best in one facet of our lives or another. So he was really honest and, and man, people, people, your imperfections are perfection to other people. We don't want to see perfection. We don't. It's in the imperfections that we see ourselves because we are not perfect, right? So when you show, when you're able to show those imperfections, that's where you get that connection. Um, and then captivating details, um, you know, the facts and the details are also important. It's not all about the fluff and it's not just about connecting on that heart to heart level. It's the total package. You want to also include some real captivating details or facts to back up what you're trying to say. People want to hear that information too. They want to know that you've got, for example, like the, um, uh, GED at the community college, you know, what are your, what's your success rate for people coming into the program? You know, those numbers really matter as well um, to be able to back up what you're saying. Uh, we talked about the different storytelling platforms. Of course, there's the, you know, typical social media platforms, uh, YouTube in particular is a, a real valuable one nowadays, and you want to get those videos on your websites for the search engine optimization. I know you've been talking about that. Blogs, blogs, and podcasts, also a great way to tell your stories. Uh, Martin, it was, I guess, uh, the year before last at the Digital Summit where they were talking about podcasts, and I think they said that the Triangle consumed more podcasts our metropolitan area than any other place in the nation. Now this was pre-COVID. So I have a yeah. feeling it was everyone was commuting back and forth and listening to the podcast, but we have a really intelligent um, audience here in the triangle area. I believe it's, we've got more PhDs per capita than any place else in the nation. I mean, an intelligent group of people. And so, you know, they are reading blogs and they are listening to podcasts. So, you know, there's so many platforms for telling your story. Um, and then also those press releases, that mainstream media connecting with those influencers to help 
tell your story as well. There's a lot of brands that are using influencers because they do have that influence on people. Um, and then also trade publications. So there's so many areas where you can invest time to share your story and connect with your desired audience. Okay, so here's the storytelling toolbox and we'll be wrapping it up um, right on time here yep. with, with the storytelling toolbox. Uh, number one, keep it simple. Pick one clear message and focus on nothing else. So for example, we were talking about, let's just go back to the GED for a second, that, you know, what is what is the message? Well, it's it's that you don't have your, you know, high school diploma and, and this is what can happen if you get it and we can help you get there. Um, it's that message. And then you've got that character who has the details, but the message itself is very clear. Okay, aim for the heart. Consumers connect with emotion. We just, we just do. It's, it's the way it works. Aim for the heart and you'll never go wrong. Uh, powerful visuals. It's easier to show than tell. Remember that image is 60%, you know, more powerful than text. So remember that um, when, when crafting your uh, brand story. Uh, number four, let the character lead. Go deep on one story and forget about everything else. Let that character be the voice of your story because people will connect with that voice. Have a very clearly defined beginning, middle, and end. Again, this is basic storytelling principles that you probably learned about in middle school, but remind yourself, have that beginning, the middle, and the end. The hook, the obstacle, the resolution. The hook, the problem, the solution. Remember to touch on each of those, whether it's a social media post, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's a blog, whatever it is, try to remind yourself of those storytelling elements um, because the way that it's constructed, it will stick with people when you tell it in that way. Um, you know, there's very few things that will keep people's attention for two hours, right? But a movie will, it's a story, it draws us in. And finally, memorable message. What are you trying to tell your audience? I can't say it enough. Um, ask yourself that as you're constructing any external or internal communication to be able to tell your story. And that brand storytelling can also be told with any internal communication as well. Wrap that story around one of your employees to really make someone picture that person. Um, and it will really resonate with them more when you tell it in storytelling form. Uh, the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing. I think I got that quote, Martin, from one of our uh, sessions that we went to. Yeah, I think so. You were I sitting so. in, yeah. Yeah, and I love that because it, it shouldn't feel like marketing. And I feel like Michael's story didn't really feel like marketing. It wasn't like, we have the best cybersecurity in right. the land. And you know what I'm saying? It, you know, make it warm and fuzzy, wrap it in a story. And I am Sloan Heffernan, and I so thank you for... Um, being here today and listening. And I hope, like I said, that you get at least one nugget out of this that you can take with you. Yeah, let's, uh, we'll, we'll bring it back and let get some questions here and comments. And then if, if you can hang out for a few minutes, we'll, you'll get to see our wrap up process for the yes. class. But I really like people. There's so many things we've talked about in the class, you footnote and and as you know, I've been teaching statewide with the Small Business Center since 2006, so I'm another advocate of it. Yes. And this was excellent, excellent presentation. Let's get a few questions or comments.